Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Well, howdy ho, everybody. Howdy ho. Yes, we're still going on Mother's Day. And Portia, what is wrong with your edges? Your edges getting bald, girl. All them wigs you putting on your hair, they taking out your baby hair, girl. Portia, you need to do like your father times told you. Stop wearing all these wigs and weave. Give your edges a break. Wear your real hair, girl. Wear your real hair. You're going bald. You're going to have to have a transplant. Just like Marlo Hampton had. Because you're wearing out your edges, girl. Can't you see it? <sighs> now, let's look at the winning circle over here. I don't know about them platform shoe candy. But the outfit is serving. But I don't know about them shoe, girl. I don't know about them shoe. You were a winner. A producer. Of the... Thoughts of a colored black man. Now, I don't know if Mar and Mary J. Blige came to sit with you or she came to sit with Shirley Ralph. Either or, y'all are both on the same winning team. Because I did not know Shirley Ralph was also a producer on the stage play, Thoughts of a Colored Man. I thought this was all Candace, baby. But, you know, hey, that's what you get when you think. You got to do your research and look a little further. But, yes, both Shirley Ralph as well as that man in the middle and Candy Burris. Don't know who that man in the middle is. Don't really care one way or the other. But I'm guessing the three of them were producers of the hit play, Thoughts of a Colored Man. Hopefully, they will make it into a, uh, what do you call it, a movie thing. Because I'm too much like Broadway plays or anything like that. So, maybe I can get a sneak peek of what is really going on. It's fascinating. And why they won that uh, award for that particular stage play production. But what we got Porsche over here doing. While Ken is out there serving up, building on to her resume. Making it do what it do. Making that dollar. Porsche out here partying. Partying in the club. Now, if we go back, way back when... Woo, child, that Porsche Family Matter Pursue book or whatever it was that I bought. Half price. But anyway, she had that partying, y'all. Partying, partying, partying. But in her book, she stated that she had gave up partying. Partying, partying, her partying days were behind her. But every chance we get to see her on her social media account, she's always posting partying somewhere now this was back in last year in october when the whole thing came out about candy was uh promoting this play the thoughts of a color uh man she appeared on kelly clarkston's show and she had a very detailed interview with her and you know candy was explaining everything about the uh production of thoughts of a color black man was written uh produced uh I guess uh, taping the scenes or whatnot, the writers and all that kind of stuff, all of them were black. Okay, even the production team was black. The cast members were black. Everything was black on black on black. Okay, black excellence. And Candy was one of the four, uh, four mothers of bringing this play into fruition. But like again, like I said, during this whole interview, she didn't say anything about Shirley Ralph. Uh, how I know Sh Sh Shirley Ralph is a part of it is because I went on the color play or color thoughts of a black man uh, tag and she was being interviewed and she was actually telling people how proud she was to be one of the producers on the show. Uh, so I was like, oh, okay, all right, Candy left that part out, but I guess you, if you don't toot your own horn, nobody else will toot it for you, but okay, I'm tooting it, Candy, I'm tooting it, and, um, 
you know, like I said, it was uh, back in October and the play was was going to be running around that time, I guess, in December. And she was doing a lot of press promo for it. So I'm like, um, Miss Candy, Mrs. Candy. <laughs> Burris Tucker was out here serving up on the Kellen Clarkston show. And she was right on point with everything. They both kept it to the stage play and everything surrounding it. They didn't really get into anything personal like, you know, her husband or her kids or the OLG gang and all that stuff. That wasn't coming up. She was just doing her promotion for, um, what do you call it, uh, the, the play lots of a color man and uh she definitely was doing her darn thing to make us want to go out there and see the play if we were ever in new york around that time in december but a lot of stuff had would start closing down because of the covid uh issue that we're still having to this day but you know candy was like all excited that they were able to bring a stage play back since broadway in a sense had been shut down uh because of the COVID uh, situation we were having and a lot of things weren't being done and people weren't going out to movies because everything was kind of like secluded and we had to definitely watch ourselves when it comes to uh, being prayed for you know that disease not disease but illness I guess you could say uh, would impact a lot of people uh, in those close and fine and <coughs> close and uh, refined places uh or confined places i should say uh the spacing was not tolerable and wasn't enough where you can be six feet away from people and still have off your mask and breathe comfortably but um yeah so we have to <coughs> excuse me definitely give candy uh salutes and and, and um thank yous and and giving her her accolades for being a part of such a state production with a great team she uh, had definitely implied to us she was working with and everybody did what it made to do to be able to get this prestigious award so while we got Karen out here showing and proving and you know like I said putting more accolades on her resume we got Portia over him partying and is that uh, Simon Gavadia's niece y'all I think it is. But let me know if I'm in the era of that. And then you got Shamia running around here acting like she in high school and doing all this dance. And she thinks she's still a part of the Atlanta Hawks cheerleaders team or something to that effect. I know she's a choreographer for them or she once was. And she also is supposed to be working with um, Todd Tucker on some podcast or some kind of show like speak on it. But it's talking about Atlanta black men or the housewives and how they come and go dealing with their wives on a daily basis and their hectic schedules and how they fit in with it but i, I gotta go look at it again because when i did get that first glance and shamia is supposed to be hosting which is kind of funny how you can have friendships with two different people that don't really care for each other not like that and how you keep their secrets so i guess she's a pretty cool friend to be able to bounce around and be around Candy and her family and friends. And then go back and be around Portia's family and friends. So it's kind of exciting. But yet messy at the same damn time. So that, <laughs> I'm like damn Shamil. And I didn't know this is when I'm pretty sure Simon had his restaurant at the time. Uh, and uh, Ryan Cameron was over there probably parlaying with him. And seeing what it do and what it didn't do. And evidently it didn't go that far. Because his restaurant. Meaning Simon Gobadi's restaurant. Ended up going belly up. Or he sold it. Or he went bankrupt with it. I, I have really no idea. And don't really care at this time. But we just giving you a little background history. On why that could have been. Why they were taking pictures. And them being promoted in a uh, eatery type magazine. But yes. While. Uh, Candy was on the red carpet at the GLAAD Awards receiving a prestigious uh, reward for outstanding Broadway production play. You know, she was on the winning team. Uh, we had Portia in the club serving it up with her body and rumping around on the floor. Okay? With Shamia's help. And I'm thinking, Shamia, where's your husband? Are y'all having marital problems? Well, what's really going on? Can you really tell us what's going on here? 
because this it seems like something's going on. Cause you're partying a little bit too much with Portia for you to have a man at home and a child to attend to. And like I said, I don't really know what's going on with um, Simon Gabadia's niece. Uh, I don't know if she has a man in her life or what truly is going on. But definitely she's out there partying a lot with Portia. Or maybe Portia's drumming up all this media attention because... Uh, She's giving us some hopes of a wedding spinoff. But, like I said, Candy's doing it all. She's doing the OLG game. She's doing um, press with the Colors of a Black Man thing. She's serving on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, she got her own speaking podcast. Speak on it! And, I mean, she's just doing everything. She's meeting with the mayor of Atlanta. She might, and then she's over at Piedmont Hospital trying to be an ambassador for them. I mean, God, oh, Candy is just everywhere and everybody's loving it. Mm-hmm. Okay. She must be doing a lot of stuff. <sighs> a lot of stuff. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, I just wanted to salute both Shere uh, Shirley Ralph as well as Candy Burris. And I don't know who the man is. If anybody want to tell me, please do so. <laughs> Let a sister know who that man was. But with, since he was holding that award, I'm thinking he has a part to play in it as well. But yes, congratulations on Candace's nomination at the GLAAD Awards and that team of actors and definitely Shirley Ralph. And it seems like Candace not wanting to give Shirley Ralph a hold of that award. <laughs> so I'm like, Candy, you must share. Share in the all the success, okay, baby? Because if you don't know, you should know Shirley Ralph been out in that acting world a very, very long time. And I'm pretty sure she can teach you a lot about acting. So be a vessel to absorb as much as you can in the entity of acting so you can prevail and do something else. Uh, besides being on this Ratchet TV show, The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Hopefully you will believe in yourself a little bit more to let go that check and get a hold to the acting check, the film check, the movie check. Definitely, if you get a part in a real movie on uh, the big screen, girl, that's more money than you probably could make if you wanted to star characters. You see what I'm saying? That you would make on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm just like, hey... Take flight, honey. Release, relinquish, and fly. Flourish a little bit more. Don't stay in one thing because you don't got too, uh, what do you call it? Too relaxed, for lack of a better word. Uh, you know, get on up there. Do what you need to do. You're definitely moving and shaking with the big dogs, okay? Uh, Real Housewives Love the Land to give you your flat platform your foundation and it's time for you to bloom baby bloom in other ways see you up there you know shaking and moving with the mayor and i'm sure you were very instrumental with getting people to go out you know being his advocate to vote for him and things of that nature but don't, don't mess with ti now because even ti said you got the credit he got the money i don't like, oh, no, know candle like she got both of them she don't need you ti sit your ass down somewhere okay tiny get your husband that's what i want to say but anyway that's all i really have for this video guys okay just a short little clip you know and she was also moving and shaking by her going to uh receive the award she had to come back and come to atlanta and be a part of a, a a culture podcast or a culture show where she's talking about all her things that she's doing and you could do it and the culture you know need to flourish and and, and go forward in this direction i mean she can't be doing something everything i think can't forget where she at probably her time zone how she been flying out flying in and all this kind of stuff but she's doing it she's she, she's young she's in her what mid 40s now or early 40s so hopefully she'll be slowing down a little bit to relax relate and release and when you're working in the background, you can be able to do all of that. And as I have said on many times with Candy, you know, she does a lot more behind the scenes that's going to garner her more money and revenue streams than she could 
possibly do by being out in the front all the time. You see what I'm saying? Because she's doing an excellent job. She's on the right uh, playing field and she's on the right road to uh, international success. Even though we know she's international from being with Escape, being on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. But I'm saying just taking all that to a side. And we're focusing on what she's doing in the production, the background, the filming, the directing, the, you know, uh, the writing. That's where we need her to be because that's where the money is. Being out on screen, being seen all the time is not where it's at. You know what I'm saying? But being something that you can't get rid of is good writers, good producers, good film uh, videographers. All of that stuff. Directing. That is where the money is. That's why you see Regina King be trying to do what she need to do. Debbie Allen be trying to do what they need to do. They ain't in front no more. They don't have that. They trying to get where the money at. And where the money at is behind the scenes. Okay? Behind the scenes. And then she's trying to play up this role. You know, I'm pretty sure it's stage. The hun talk going through some marital issues. This, that, third. Well, honey, if you've been married 20 plus years, that's all you had was issues. But y'all saw the bigger picture of staying together than letting it go. Okay, so get it, got it good. That's basically what our uh, four mothers and fathers did. They may have had infractions, cheating here, cheating there, messing up money here and there. But they saw that they couldn't do it or they didn't want to be with nobody else. Uh, totality but with that spouse that they messing around on you see what I'm saying but it seems like today's um and including my generation we don't want to be bothered with that mess we don't want to have no side chicks no side children to worry about you know it's either you're going to be faithful to us to our family what we got oh you got to hit the road jack and don't you come back no more no more no more no more hit the road jack and don't you come back no more see that's what our generation is about we refuse to even be in that situation we'd rather be by ourselves still making it do what it do and not having that trouble of worrying about where this other person is so it just depends on what you want out of life and what you can deal with in your mind and your space okay but that's all i got for this video guys hope y'all like it love it. gotta have more i'll be here but i gotta talk to y'all about candy birds she's trying to shade me she shaved me y'all but y'all have to come back to the next video to see what i'm talking about and see what we can do about this situation to rectify that okay so i could feel better because right now i was filming when i heard it but it is what it is and that's the way the chip falls sometimes but i'll see y'all next video guys take it easy bye bye